Hi children, how are you? Are you fine? I hope you are fine. Did you watch the previous video? The video was about the world during the world wars. In that, I taught you about the introduction and the various causes and consequences. And that the most important one is the immediate cause of the first world war, etc. I hope you watched it and you studied the textbook also. So, whatever we are sending through the WhatsApp, you watch it carefully and uh, try to understand and read the textbook also much uh, thoroughly. And put one on the notebook and write the such important points and the next uh, question answers, whatever we send. Okay, do you follow all these instructions? I hope we will do it. Now, Today's present topic in that continuation that is the Treaty of Versailles in the year 1919. The Treaty of Versailles in the year 1919. After the post world war, the victorious countries started to impose the terms and conditions of the Treaty of Versailles on defeated countries. So due to this, Austria, Hungary and Ottoman, they dissolved and broken into the small nations and even german empire also broken up and they formed or they replaced as a democratic republic at the same time turkey or ottoman empire it broke into and it replaced as a, as a republic of turkey and due to this year, whatever the colonies, those that belong to this tur Turkey, were divided among the victorious nations. And uh, due to this, uh, the new, the large number of new countries uh, were emerged in that Austria, Hungary, and next uh, Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, Latvia, Estonia, and uh, Finland. And Germany was imposed for the indemnity or penalty in both terms. The meaning is here, the Germany paid compensation and even territorial compensation also it paid. So that Germany lost its territory for France and some other countries. This is the Treaty of Versailles. And the next topic that is the League of Nations. In the year 1920. The League of Nations was the first ever international organization and it's a consequence of the Treaty of Versailles and it established in the year 1920, January 11th and it existed until it dissolved in the year 1946 and it has the members around 58 and what are the objectives of this League of Nations? In that, the first objective is to prevent the wars and solve, or the, solve the disputes through the negotiations, reduce the disarmaments or reduce the or to weapons. And next year, it also sought work for development. And it says about uh, welfare of the labor and health. But it failed. Initially it was succeeded but it was failed. Due to it could not stop the first world war. This is about uh, the League of Nations. Children are listening. So in the, the most important uh, points are here. When it formed, what are the objectives? And next, how many members were they? So, these are the important points in this League of Nations. After that, next topic that is date of the Russian Revolution. Yeah, Russians or Russians followed the Julian calendar till February 1st, 1918. Later they changed themselves towards the Gregorian calendars which is the calendar 
followed everywhere. The Gregorian calendar has 13 days ahead of the Julian calendar. So in that year, the October Revolution took place in the month of November. And the February Revolution took place in the month of the March. So this is about the calendar that is followed by the Russians. And after this topic, here we have one more topic that is the Russian Socialist Revolution. The Russian Socialist Revolution. That happened in the year 1917 and it lasted around Means 1917 to 1922. Yeah, you know that already I told you this Russia was withdrew in the First World War in the year 1917 due to the internal revolution in the country. So, Russia is one of the largest country and it uh, spread into two continents like Europe and Asia, so it called Europe and Asian powers. It has the population around 156 millions. And the people's occupation is here mostly farming, meaning is most of the people they are farmers. So due to this year, always disputes between feudals and these farmers. Most of the lands occupied by the feudals and these farmers, they have to pay the rent for their tilting land. And who was the ruler in the year, that is the first half of the 20th century? Here, the Russian rulers are called Tsars. In the year 1917 to 1922 between the ruler was here Tsar Nicholas II and he ruled the country with the help of the what, army and bureaucracy. Yeah, Russia it has a struggle about its economy duration of the first world war. And this Russia had the largest army before the First World War. But in the First World War, around 2 million of army and its civilians lost by this Russia. And it's the biggest loss for the country of Russia. And here, these soldiers were supplied a large amount of food and due to this the cities in the cities the food scarcity occur so here around 10000 women from the capital city of saint petersburg they took out a procession demanding peace and bread in some to support these women even workers also joined in the procession. By this, this Nicholas was upset and he ordered the army to suppress and even given the orders, fire them. But instead of firing these soldiers, they do join in the one demonstration. In one or two days, the situation was very worse. And due to this, this Nicholas II, he escaped from the throne. And later, this Russian formed a provisional government. This is known as the first revolution in the year 1917. Or it is called as a March Revolution in the Russia. In the same year 1917, one more largest revolution took place in the country of Russia. It was not spontaneous. At that time, this country was ruled by rich and aristocratic people. Liberals and aristocratic people. 
it is after the abdication of the Nicholas II. And these liberals and aristocrats, they would like to continue the war. But actually, the common people tired with the wars. And the economy also very shortage. So then, they don't want any wars. So, they organized themselves in a councils called Soviets. The Soviet of soldiers and the industrial workers and the people in rural areas. They, they were formed by a group that is known as here Russian Communist Party of Bolshevik. And these Bolsheviks, they represented themselves as the power of the common people. So, this is the this description of the, the Russian Socialist Revolution. Yeah, children, did you listen? I hope you listen. And here, after listening, once you read the textbook, I underline the most important points. Yes. And put a one on the notebook and write down the points. And whatever the questions that we are sending through WhatsApp, those you learnt. Okay, children. I hope you will do all these things. Okay. We will have next topic in a next class. Till then, thank you. Have a nice day. Stay home. Stay safe.